Introduction to Premiere Pro CS4 Interface You can see we have kept a brand new Premiere Pro CS4 Interface opened for you all. But don't worry, soon you will know how you can get this in the upcoming lessons. Now, let's see how we can handle our interface. You can see a few panels with different options which may confuse you. But don't worry, be patient and follow because we will explain all. Most of the features in Premiere Pro are grouped in areas known as panels. For example, you have them here. As you can see, by default, the very first panel contains project and resource panels docked together. Project panel, the repository for links to project assets like video clips, audio files, graphics, still images and sequences. You can use bins, file folders to organize your assets. Let's click the next panel, Resource Central. Resource Central helps in instant access tutorials, sample files and extensions for Adobe digital video applications. Below it, there is again a collection of four panels, Media Browser, Info, Effects and History. But where is the History panel? It's right there next to the Effect panel. To see it, just hold this thin scroll bar and drag it to the left. See? Here it is. Media Browser makes it easy to browse to files and to find them by their type. The Info panel displays several data about a selected item and timecode information for clips under the current time indicator in the timeline. Standard effects are listed in the Effects panel and are organized into two main bins. Video effects and audio effects. Use the History panel to jump to any state of the project created during the current working session. Note. Above each panel, we have this thin scroll bar. Just hold and drag it left or right. This is another collection of panels. Source Monitor, Effect Control Panel, Audio Mixer Panel. As you scroll a little, you can see the Metadata Panel too. The Source Monitor plays back individual clips. In the Source Monitor, you prepare clips that you want to add to a sequence by specifying in and out points and the clip's source tracks, audio or video. The Effects Controls panel lists all the effects that are applied to the currently selected clip. Using the Audio Mixer, you can set volume levels of two or more audio tracks relative to one another. The Metadata panel shows both Clip Instance Metadata and XMP File Metadata for a selected asset. Right to it is Program Monitor. The Program Monitor plays back the sequence of clips that you are assembling. It's your view of the active sequence in a Timeline panel. Below, it is Timeline panel. A single timeline panel appears in a frame in the lower central portion of the screen when you first launch Adobe Premiere Pro. Open any of its default workspaces or create a project. As you can see here, the extreme right of the screen, you can have two more panels there. This is Audio Masters Meters. Audio Master Meters panel displays the volume level of the Audio Master track. This is a mini version of the master track, VU, which stands for Volume Unit. This meter is in the audio mixer. This is Tools Panel. Tools Panel contains a number of tools for editing sequences in a timeline panel. When you select a tool, the pointer changes shape according to the selection. For example, when you select the Razor tool and position the pointer over a clip in a timeline panel, the icon changes to a razor. As I told you in the very beginning of this lesson, soon we will see how you can get this interface. So, here we go. First, let's close this interface by clicking the Close button right here.
Click No as we don't want to save the changes in this project. Now, let's create your first new project. There are two ways to open the software. Firstly, double-click the shortcut icon in the desktop. If the icon is not there, then click on Start Menu, go to All Programs, Adobe Master Collection CS4, then Adobe Premiere Pro CS4. Right-click on it. As you click it, you will get a pop-up menu. Go to Send To option and click on Desktop Create Shortcut. You can see that the new shortcut icon is created here. As you click it, you will get a splash screen which will load the application and finally the welcome screen will be highlighted. Note, once you will finish the installation of software, the shortcut icon will be created automatically on your desktop. Creating a new project 1. New project window. After launching Premiere Pro, you will be greeted with a welcome screen, which we have seen in the previous lesson. As you can see, these are the recently opened projects. You can click any of these to get into it directly. You can see the new project button here, which when clicked will create a project. This is the open project button used to open the saved projects. Finally, the Help button, which will take you to the Adobe Premiere Pro Help site. Anytime, you can come out of this window, just by clicking this Exit button. Let's create a new project by clicking the New Project button. As you can see, we've got a new project window. There are two tabs, General and Scratch Disk. Let's start with General tab first. Here is Action and Title Safe Area. Title Safe Area specifies how much of the frame edge to mark as a safe zone for titles, so that titles aren't cut off by television set over scan. Titles are usually assumed to require a wider safe zone than action. Action Safe specifies how much of the frame edge to actually mark as a safe zone for action so that action isn't cut off by television set over scan. We will have a detailed study about the action and title safe area later. You can choose different types of display format showing how your video and audio should be displayed. In video display format you can choose time code, feet plus frames 16 millimeter, feet plus frames 35 millimeter or frames. Let's say we choose timecode. Below is the audio display format you have for audio samples and milliseconds. Choose audio samples. Next is capture format, which helps for information about setting the capture format. We have two formats to capture. One is DV, which means digital videos, and another is HDV, which means high definition video. We will discuss it later in detail, how to capture the video. Next to General tab is Scratch Disk tab. Now go to Scratch Disk Settings. The capture audio and video and the previews of audio and video will be saved by default where you have saved your project. You can also choose different locations to save your capture videos or audios. Below the Browse button shows how much space is available in your drive. Once you are satisfied, you can give the location for your new project. This will be on the bottom of the window. Click the Browse button to select the location from the Browse for Folder window. Choose the location of the folder to be saved. Alternatively, you can make a new folder to give a name to the folder and then click OK. Below the location, you can see the name. Just give the name for the project that you are going to work and then click OK. We will discuss this new sequence window in the next lesson. Creating a new project 2. New sequence window. We are going to continue the last lesson. In this lesson we are going to discuss options present in the new sequence window with three tabs. Sequence presets, general and tracks. Let's see all one by one. 
Now let's start and look at the sequence presets. You can see the available presets for the television video standards. Here you can see the AVC HD format which is newly added in CS4. This is used to create high definition videos. But most commonly used television formats are DV, NTSC, which are used for North American standards. And another format is DV PAL. It is used for European standards. You also have different standard formats for your mobiles and iPods. Let us choose DV NTSC widescreen of 48 kilohertz. As you click any of the preset formats, you can see the description of the particular selected preset format on the right hand side of the window. Now let us discuss the general tab. In the general tab you can see the editing mode. You can change the formats from the list that you want to work with. In video settings we can change the field and how your video should be and you can also choose any of the options like lower field first, upper field first or choose no fields. And the other settings which we already discussed in the new project window. You can also save this as presets. Click on save presets and give the name and the descriptions for the sequence. Next tab we are going to discuss is all about the tracks. Here we have video and audio. In video we can add a number of tracks according to which we are working with. In audio track we can choose our master as mono, stereo or 5.1. We can add a number of tracks like mono, stereo and 5.1 or the submix of mono, stereo and 5.1. 5.1 is digital surround sound. You can save the changes which you have done according to your needs. Click Save Preset. As you click it, you will get Save Settings window where you can enter a new name and you can enter a brief description about it in the description right here. Once you are done, click OK. Premiere Pro will automatically create a new custom folder and add the newly created preset inside it. You can delete it anytime you want, just make sure the preset is selected and click Delete Preset button. Please note, you aren't able to delete any of the default presets. At the bottom of the New Sequence window, you can see the Sequence Name. Give the name to the sequence and click OK. OK, well, this is the very first interface of Premiere Pro CS4 for you guys. Isn't it great? Don't worry about things which are present here you maybe don't understand. We will discuss all of them one by one as we proceed in our course. So, be patient. Workspace Customization up to now we have seen what are available in the default workspaces. But now we will see how we can customize default workspace. You can easily customize Premiere Pro CS4 workspace settings which make it convenient for the new users too. So let's start. As you can see the selected panel is highlighted by a yellow border around it. If you bring the mouse pointer here to the intersection of four panels your pointer will change to the four arrow head. Just click and hold it as you move without leaving the pointer. You can see all the panels in the workspace are resizing automatically. That is why workspaces in Premiere Pro CS4 is called as liquid workspace. Similarly you can resize any of the panels according to your needs. Don't worry about other panels as they will be adjusted automatically. This is one of the best features in Premiere Pro CS4. Another thing which you have noticed is that each panel has these little, little dots right next to the panel name. If you click and drag them, not only the mouse pointer will change, but as we move over any other panel, some quadrants start coming up on the different panels over which our pointer is moving. Now, still the mouse pointer is clicked, 
otherwise it will not work. OK, if you release the pointer on the centre of the panel, the selected panel will get docked with this program panel. If you release the pointer top, it's going to place above the program panel. Similarly, if you release it to the left, it will place it between source and program panels. To the bottom, it will place it between program and timeline panels, and to the right and top. You can also squeeze it to the extreme right of the screen. Once you get the green highlight, just leave the panel there. Let's release the mouse right here, and as you leave it here, the panel makes a space for it, and automatically all the other panels are squeezed. Let's drag it and place it here to the center. If you release the mouse button, it will be docked with the other panels. Now, I want you all to pay attention. See, as I click and drag source panels to immediate left, you will notice that the panel is moving to the left of project and resource panels. So, these are the ways to arrange panels in Premiere Pro CS4. One more thing which you should be aware of is that if you hold the control button on your keyboard and then click and drag any panel and release the mouse pointer, you will get a separate window for the particular panel, which is independent of any of the size changes inside the workspace. You can dock any panel inside this free floating window, which will also be independent of liquid workspace. To reset it, all you have to do is just grab these little dots and drag and drop it where you want to place them. Finally, let's say that this is the workspace which we have set up for our project. To save your workspace, go to Windows menu, go to Workspace and click New Workspace. As you click it, you will get New Workspace window. Just enter any name for your workspace and click OK. Again, go to Windows menu, go to Workspace and see here is your saved workspace, which is selected now. You can see some of the workspace presets which have been provided by Premiere Pro CS4 according to your needs. Let's click Effect Workspace. Have you observed that the whole workspace will automatically adjust for the Effect Workspace? Well, this will be very useful when you are working with files that need heavy effects. Now, if you click the workspace which you have saved, see the workspace is changed to exactly the same as your own workspace. Similarly, you can delete the saved workspace anytime. Just go to Windows menu, go to Workspace, and then down in the list, click on Delete Workspace. As you click it, you will get a Delete Workspace window. Select the particular workspace which you want to delete from this drop-down list. But what is this? The saved workspace is not there inside the list. Well, this is because you can't delete the active workspace. Click Cancel and go back to Windows menu, Workspace, and click some other workspace. Now again, go to Windows menu, Workspace, and click Delete Workspace. Now, see the saved workspace is visible in the list. Select it and click OK. See, it is no longer in the workspace list. You can also reset the workspace anytime. Just click Reset Current Workspace. Click Yes and see Premiere Pro has reset the whole workspace for you.